Military and civilian aerobatic pilots sometimes use anti-G suits, anti-G straining maneuvers, and a change in posture to increase or prolong positive vertical G tolerance. An anti-G suit consists of a series of air bladders attached tightly around the legs and the abdomen. These bladders automatically inflate during exposure to positive Gs. When inflated, the abdomen and legs are squeezed and the blood in the upper body is prevented from pooling in the legs. This enhances the blood flow to the brain. When the air bladder over the stomach is inflated, it also helps lift the diaphragm, which in turn elevates the heart and decreases its distance to the brain and eyes. An important point to remember is that the closer the heart is to the brain, the less the heart has to work to keep blood pumping to the brain. This explains why short-statured pilots have greater tolerance to positive vertical g-forces than taller pilots. The anti-g straining maneuver consists of special breathing and muscle tensing techniques. Using these techniques helps improve blood flow to the heart and brain during positive vertical G exposure. The anti-G straining maneuver involves forcefully exhaling against a completely closed glottis, the structure that closes the windpipe from the esophagus, and at the same time contracting the muscles of the legs, arm, and abdomen. A cyclic breathing technique must be used that involves a rapidly inhaled lung full of air you must forcefully exhale against the closed glottis to increase internal chest pressure. This compresses the heart and blood vessels in the chest cavity and provides an artificial pumping action that increases the blood flow to the brain. As a result, blood flow to the brain is maintained during positive vertical G exposure. This breathing technique must be completed once every three to five seconds. If the breathing cycle is too fast, less than every three seconds, then internal chest pressure cannot be maintained. Fatigue, hyperventilation, and G loss of consciousness can occur. If the breathing cycle is too slow, more than every five seconds, then chest pressure remains too high and the return of blood to the heart is restricted. This results in reduced blood flow to the brain. The simultaneous tensing of leg and abdominal muscles with the anti-G straining maneuver helps reduce the pooling of blood in the lower extremities and facilitates the return of blood to the heart so that it can be pumped to the brain. The anti-G straining maneuver is physically fatiguing because it requires the use of body muscles. You should prepare yourself for this activity with a well-rounded physical fitness program that incorporates weight training to help the strengthening of contracting muscles. While aerobic exercise produces a healthy low blood pressure, Excessive aerobic exercise may reduce the blood pressure to a level that will actually decrease an individual's tolerance to G-forces. Refer to the physical fitness training module for a well-rounded physical fitness program. In-flight postural modification is another technique that increases tolerance to positive vertical Gs. Astronauts sit in a reclined position lying on their backs during a shuttle launch. The F-16 aircraft has a 30-degree tilt-back seat to reduce the effects of positive vertical Gs acting on the body during in-flight maneuvering. Aerobatic pilots fly airplanes with seats that tilt back. They also have rudder pedals move forward and upwards to elevate the position of the legs and feet in relation to the upper body. All of these seating positions allow astronauts, fighter pilots, and aerobatic pilots to be positioned in a way that decreases the vertical distance from the heart to the brain, thereby helping to maintain adequate blood supply.
Human tolerance to negative vertical genes is lower when compared to positive genes. Most symptoms associated with exposure to negative vertical Gs are the result of increased blood flow to the upper body. The blood is pulled from your lower body into your chest, upper extremities, and head. The symptoms are similar to those experienced when your body is in an upside-down position, but the severity of such symptoms is much greater. The most common symptoms of exposure to negative vertical Gs include sensation of weightlessness, sensation of congestion or fullness of the head and face, swelling of the face, headache, bleeding from the small blood vessels in the white parts of the eye, eye discomfort or pain, and mental confusion. The term red out is sometimes used to describe what a person sees in a negative vertical G environment. This has nothing to do with blood in the eye. Although there is not much research on this topic, most physiologists believe that the lower eyelids cover the eyes during the negative vertical G and what you see is the light through the eyelids with a red tint. In summary, a G-force affects the body's cardiovascular, pulmonary, and neurological systems. The basic concepts of speed, velocity, and acceleration can help you to better understand G-forces. The three types of acceleration are linear, a change in speed but not direction, radial, a change in direction but not in speed, and angular meaning there is a simultaneous change in speed and direction. There are three types of G-forces that have a significant impact on the body. Transverse Gs, defined as the acceleration force applied along the front to back axis of the body. Lateral Gs, defined as the acceleration force applied along the side to side axis of the body. And Vertical Gs, defined as the acceleration force applied along the head-to-foot axis of the body. There are several factors about G-forces that have important implications for individual tolerance limits, including the magnitude of the G-force. The greater the magnitude, the lower the tolerance. Duration of exposure. The longer the exposure, the lower the tolerance. Rate of acceleration. The higher the onset rate, the lower the tolerance. Direction of the force, defined by the axis of the body where the G-force is applied. Heart to eye distance. The shorter the distance between the heart and brain, the greater the tolerance to positive vertical Gs. A pilot seated in a reclined position has a greater tolerance to positive Gs than a pilot in an upright position. While most general aviation pilots will not be exposed to high G forces, it is important for all pilots to understand the cause and effects of G forces on the human body. Having a better understanding of acceleration in aviation can make for a safer, more responsive flight.